In 1949, the Hughes Aircraft Company began designing the XH-17 helicopter. This aircraft was considered a large helicopter at the time, without a cargo compartment. Instead, it was designed to carry goods by increasing the height of the landing gear to create a space in the belly of the aircraft. It was capable of transporting goods weighing up to 4,536 kilograms at a speed of 105 kilometers per hour. The XH-17 could be used for transporting large equipment, but it was more of a technology demonstrator. The aircraft itself was bulky, had a short range and a short lifespan for its propellers. In 1952, Hughes signed a contract with the military to develop a large military transport helicopter under the codename XH-28. This project utilized the technology from the XH-17, and the prototype was expected to make its first flight in 1956, with a lifting capacity of 18 to 20 tons. Some articles suggest that Hughes began the design work in January 1951, possibly as a unilateral technical exploration by the company. The XH-28 inherited the overall structure of the XH-17, with a relatively slender and elongated fuselage. The four-point landing gear extended outward from the sides of the fuselage and then downward, creating a huge space in the belly of the aircraft where cargo could be hoisted. The rear end of the narrowing tail boom was equipped with a horizontal stabilizer and a tail rotor in the forward position. The aircraft was powered by two Allison XT40A8 turboshaft engines, each producing 5,300 horsepower. In contrast to the XH-17, the XH-28 placed the engines inside the fuselage instead of on the sides. The power from these two engines was transmitted through a gearbox to drive an independent air compressor, which did not directly drive the main rotor. A portion of the power from the gearbox was transferred to drive the tail rotor at the rear of the tail boom. Compressed air was delivered through pipes inside the rotor hub to pipes inside the rotor blades. Both the rotor hub and the rotor blades had a fuel circulation system, and the rotor blades had multiple nozzles at the end for small combustion chambers on the sides. Compressed air and fuel combined in these chambers to produce thrust, driving the entire rotor system. Due to the poor rotor design of the XH-17, the designers made significant modifications to the rotor structure of the XH-28. The rotor now had four blades, with some parts made of high-strength titanium alloy, and the blades themselves were longer to better withstand loads and vibrations. Hughes began constructing a full-scale prototype of the XH-28 in mid-1952, but the construction was not completed. In 1953, the U.S. military ordered the halt of both the XH-28 and XH-17 projects. One of the reasons for this turn of events was the reduction in military spending after the Korean War, with a shift in focus towards the development of medium and light helicopters in the helicopter field. Although the XH-28 heavy transport helicopter did not develop into a specific production model, many people still feel regretful about it. Many believed that it would have been a successful air transport helicopter, capable of directly lifting equipment such as artillery, as well as trucks and light tanks. If successful, it would have played a role in promoting tactical changes in the Army. However, the XH-28 itself also used some relatively uncommon technologies, such as its unique rotor drive system. The reliability of this power mode, which rotates itself by blowing at the blade tips, has been used in some micro-helicopters, but its applicability to a large helicopter remains questionable. The XH-28 helicopter was estimated to have an empty weight of 23.6 tons, a maximum takeoff weight of 47.6 tons, a maximum payload of approximately 22.7 tons, a maximum cruising speed of 140 to 150 kilometers per hour, and a maximum range of 150 to 170 kilometers.